Hi everybody and welcome to my studio today. Uh, on this video we're going to paint this uh, pop art lady. I have painted her on scrapbook paper which I have adhered to mat board and I show you how to do that. And I put some stone little accents on the, the border um, to make it look like it's actually in a frame. This is a pretty easy project, kind of a beginner type project um, for all of you out there that's been asking me for more beginner type projects. This is definitely one of those. And I think we're going to have a really great time painting this one. I really enjoyed it. So let's turn around to my paint table and let's get started. <laughs> Okay, we are going to start this project, and um, I am just on a piece of mat board here, and we're going to adhere some paper to it. So we're just going to apply some decoupage medium on here, and this bottle is almost empty. So let's see if I can get any decoupage out of it. That isn't very lucky. a little bit in here still. I'm just going to put it directly onto this mat board, but you could um, certainly apply multi-purpose sealer on here first. I just want to get whatever's left in this bottle. Don't want to waste any of it. This is Deco Arts Decoupage for paper. It's the one that I like the most. But whatever decoupage you have will be just fine. So let me spread this out with a damp sponge here. And I'm going to need a lot more. A little bit more on here. And this probably will buckle up. A little bit until it's completely dry so don't worry about that once it dries it should flatten and if it doesn't just put something heavy on it and it will flatten back out we want to make sure our edges have plenty of decoupage on them okay then we're going to take our paper And this is just a piece of scrapbooking paper, and we're just going to lay it right on the edge and smooth it out. Not quite straight, but we'll have to go with that. Let me wipe this glue up so my paper doesn't stick to my surface here. All right, let's just push it down nice and firm. air bubbles. I do not want any air bubbles. I'm going to put a little bit more on this edge. Push it down. If our edge starts coming up once it's dry, we can just lift it and apply some more. Decoupage medium on it. This is the brand I like to use, Decoupage, DecoArt. It's an Americana, DecoArt Americana Decoupage for paper. They have it for many different surfaces, so but this is the one I like to use on most everything. Okay, I want to trim my paper. And you can do this once it's dry if you prefer. I'm going to flip it over here and grab a knife. I've got it laying on my cutting mat so I don't cut my table cover. Nice sharp blade. You want a nice sharp blade here or it's just going to tear your paper. This is not quite a 12 inch piece. 
Okay, so we've got that cut, and now we want to apply some decoupage on the top to seal this paper. I'm just going to dip my sponge in there and get a generous amount on my sponge and apply it over the top of the paper. You can brush it on as well. I just find with a sponge it goes on much faster and you really want to try not to touch your paper once you've applied this on it because your your fingers can stick to the paper and then tear the paper. Go all the way out to the edges and then we're going to set this aside to dry and then once it's dry we'll see if any of our edges have lifted and we will apply some uh, decoupage underneath the paper on the edges if we need to. Okay, we'll be back when it dries. Okay, mine's not dry yet. I just wanted to come back and show you that it is starting to buckle just a little bit. Some matte boards will buckle a whole lot more. I've got a little bit of an air bubble in here, but when that dries and everything settles down into it, it should not be there. And um, if it is, you can just poke a pin in it and rub some um, decoupage down in there. Uh, take a straight pin and poke a couple of holes and rub some decoupage down in there and it should adhere it. But when I uh, mentioned to put a weight on it, I want you to wait until it's dry and put something heavy on it to flatten it back out. So don't do it while the decoupage is still wet. Okay, mine is dry. So now I want to mark off with my uh, compass a one inch border on all sides. So that was just a one inch border with my compass. Now I want to tape inside this right here. We're going to paint a frame around this piece. Now I wanted to tell you a little bit about your uh, scrapbooking paper. You can um, use any color of scrapbooking paper that you want. You just want to make sure that uh, it's a lighter color. write down my measurements here. So we need two pieces that are nine and seven eighths or slightly smaller. And two pieces that are seven and three sixteenths. So I'll move that aside. I'm going to pull my tape out here and I want to start with a nice clean edge so I will cut the end of my tape and get as straight a line as possible. is right here. So we want to cut it right there. Straight line. And then we'll do a second piece that same length. If it's slightly shorter, that's okay. We just want to have our ends straight. And then we need Two pieces that are seven and three sixteenths. Line up our ruler, seven and three sixteenths is right here. So we will cut a piece that length. Okay. 
Okay, so now we want to tape inside here with our tape. So we'll take the first one and line it up with our marks. Take this all the way around. I'm going to start at this end because I, I want to make sure that doesn't go past. It's a little bit long, so I'm going to cut a little bit off. You want to make sure you got a good coat of decoupage medium on here when, when you're taping it off. And it's this outside edge that we want to make sure it's sealed well. nice lines on there. So now we want to paint in the border edge and we're going to paint it in with just some black paint. So I'll just grab an old brush to paint it on there. Or you can use a sponge to paint it on. I want to get as much moisture. I want I want my brush to be damp. I don't want it to be sopping wet. So get as much moisture as you can out. And we're just going to paint on two coats of black on here. Just using acrylic paint. dry and apply a second coat on here and then we're going to come back and put some decorative touches on the corners of this. So we'll let it get dry and then get ready for a second coat. Okay, um, it's just about completely dry here. I've got my two coats on. So now I want to do some um, stuff on the borders and on the edges. So I've got this um, metallic Venetian gold paint. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just dry brush a little bit of this on my edges. <clears throat> so I'm just going to load a dry brush here and wipe some of it off on a dry paper towel. And then just skim it across our frame and just leave a little bit of dry brushing stuff on there. Load again and wipe off on a paper towel, a dry paper towel. Lightly tickle it across there. Okay, 
very gentle pressure because you don't know how much paint is going to be coming off of your brush so you don't want to uh, get too much and it looks like I might need to put some glue underneath this edge okay so uh, we're done with that brush we'll clean it out and we're going to apply some um, texture on here with some texture sand paste. Now this has real sand in it. It really feels like sandy stuff. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of it out on my palette. And I wanna mix that gold in with it. So I'm gonna put that over here, but add just a little bit more. And you know, if you have a different color of metallic paint or any kind of metallic looking paint, you can use that. it in there really well. And we're going to stencil some stones on here. Now you don't necessarily have to stencil them on. You can just brush them on with a brush. You know you could just uh, draw some stone shapes in here and stencil them on. That would be perfectly fine. But I'm going to uh, use a stencil. just a little bit and this is a stencil that is from my website it's got uh, two different sizes of bricks two different sizes of stones it's got the word believe inspire and create so we're going to use these smaller stones and just put a few of them load your palette brush the back of it and we're just going to angle the palette brush and skim it across and then add some stones now if we get too much or it goes underneath the stencil not to worry, we can come back with our black paint and separate the stones a little bit. And you don't have to fill in all the stones completely. Okay, it's probably going to be a little bit of a mess. Yep little bit of a mess there so we'll come back with our black paint and clean up those edges I'm gonna wipe the back of this off stencil off so I just laid it on top of my dry paper towel and took my wet paper towel and wiped it off and then we'll go over to this side Make sure you're not laying it in that. That really got super messy. I'm going to try and just stay in the stones instead of skimming it too much across. up a little bit. I think it's still going to be a little messy, but I've done this on another frame and I just went back with my black paint and created my spaces, but this gave me a little bit more of the raised texture that painting it on doesn't quite give you. I'm going to do all four corners the same way and we'll let it dry. It shouldn't take too long to dry and we'll come back and we'll uh, define the stone shapes a little bit more. Okay so I've gone in, this is this is still just slightly wet but you want to wait till it's dry, but I've gone in and went ahead and separated my stones a little bit more so you can kind of see um, where they separate. I didn't do this line here because that's where the edge of the tape is. But you're just going to take some black paint, but just wait until it dries and create some separations. You can make them bigger than what they originally were or keep them nice and thin. You can shape your stones however is appealing to you.
just hope you were on camera for that. Just look up and just see where you, you might want to create a little bit more separation in them to make them look more like stones. And my uh, sand stuff is still really wet, but I want to get this tape off of here. So I'm going to lift up and pull really slowly back towards the paint, or towards the tape. you don't have any paint on your hands if it's still wet when you go to the next one so you don't lay down paint where you don't want it. And we're just going to take each piece off at a time. Straight back. Pull slowly. I guarantee if you did not get it enough decoupage on your paper, it's going to pull your paper off. Okay, I've got a nice framed out little piece here. Wide angle out so you can see the whole thing. With a little decoration in the corners. And so we're going to get let this dry completely, and then we're going to come in and float some black inside here before we put our pattern on, and that will really raise the frame up and give it more dimension. Um, once this dries, if you want to come back and uh, dry brush a little bit of the gold, or a lighter gold, or brighter gold, or any color that you want on top of your stones you can do that but you definitely want to make t sure they are completely dry before you do that all right let's put some black out on our palette now the paints that I'm using on this uh, particular design are uh, deco art traditions paints and I have them in the bottle but they've currently come out with them in the tube it is a soft bodied acrylic paint I think it's soft bodied. Let me read it. Uh, medium. It's a medium bodied acrylic paint. So what we want to do here is um, shade inside of our frame. And so my brush is fairly damp. A little bit more water. And I really want to work this into my brush. I don't want the paint going all the way across my bristles. So if it starts to go across, I'm just going to wipe it out. I want to keep it on the edge of my brush. Squirt some water out for when I need to grab a little bit more moisture. And larger, longer areas can be harder to float. So if it is difficult for you to float, then you can pre-dampen and just lay some water in there so that as you go down it, the moisture is already there. I had plenty of moisture in my brush, so no worries there. So we're just creating almost a shadow right here along the edge. We'll go all the way around. We'll jump over and do this other long side. And again, if you need to pre-dampen, get just a little bit of water and dampen that edge. Uh, because we sealed this with the uh, decoupage medium, the water will not soak down into the paper like it would if we hadn't. I'm going to grab my mop brush and do that water edge right there real quick. 
Okay, and then we want to do our uh, two shorter edges now. Um, these edges you may not necessarily need to dampen, but we have to make sure that that edge is dry. I want that black to go all the way up there to that edge. I don't want to see any gaps here. Okay, so I'm going to come down and do this edge here. I'll just lightly dampen right there and grab some black paint. I've just got it on the toe of the brush here, just on that one edge. Lay your brush flat and give it soft pressure. And it's okay if you go up on the, on the black because it's black on black, no big deal. So we just have this one end down here to do, and you can already kind of tell that the frame is looking raised a little bit. A little bit of black paint just on that one edge. got a little bit of a shadow effect here that I don't really like, so I'm going to have to clean that up. It's because the paint was over too far on my brush, and it came out too far. Okay, that looks much better. So we've got it shaded. It's still a little wide there for me. Good thing about having decoupage on there is we can remove the paint pretty easily before it cures. Okay, this side needs a little bit more, I think. It's not as dark as the other sides. Okay, that looks better. All right, so now it's already giving our frame some dimension where it is uh, looks raised up. I'm gonna go back to my gold here and when it mixed with that sand a little bit, kind of muted the color just a tiny bit. So I'm just gonna tap some of this onto the stones and get some of that more rich gold color on there. And now we're going to want to go and trace our pattern onto tracing paper and transfer in all the lines. And then uh, after we do that, after I get my pattern transferred on, I will come back and show you um, how it looks with the lines on it. So let me get it transferred on here for you. Okay, I transferred my uh, pattern onto a piece of vellum so I could see through it and see where everything will fit on here. Now this is just a clip art image. It was a free clip art image that I uh, downloaded. So um, I just searched for free clip art images and I got that one. And so I just printed it off. So you can go and search for the same image. And so I'm going to bring this up. That edge up there. And then let's tape it. I'll tape it in a couple of places. And we will grab some gray graphite paper. I 
and we'll slide it up underneath it. You can get gray graphite paper at uh, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, just about any place. I don't. I'm sure Walmart probably sells it, but uh, you can get it just about anywhere. You can get it online. So we're going to take a stylus. So this is a stylus, and you can also get these at Hobby Lobby and a set of three. I've just got two. I'm not really sure where my third one is. Um, but the set comes in three different tip sizes. Okay, Or you can get this particular pencil thing. It's got a ink, uh, ink pen roller ball. It also has a black and a white ceramic lead. But I'm actually going to use the stylus because I want to make sure I get my lines uh, pretty precise. So this is the smallest sty uh, stylus that comes in the package. It's got a really super tiny end and then this end is a little bit bigger. I'm going to go to the little bit bigger end and then we're just going to trace all of our lines. And be pretty precise when you are transferring your lines so that your pattern is on nice and neat. Because we'll be um, filling all this in with black, either black paint or black paint markers, whatever you have. So just take your time. No need to rush. It's important to get all of the lines on here though. So when the line is thick you want to draw the thickness of the line so that you can Let's see if I can zoom in. So the bottom line on the lip was pretty thick, so I wanted to draw the thickness of the line, not just the thinness of the line. Okay, so every line will be transferred uh, onto this project, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, all my lines I believe are transferred on. I'm going to lift it up to make sure I haven't missed any lines. Because if you have, you want to adjust those lines before you take it off. So I'm going to take it off. I just printed mine on vellum. And we're very blurry there. Okay, so you can see all my lines on there. So now what we want to do is draw these lines in. And to do that, we're going to use, you can use a paintbrush, a round brush, and a liner brush to do all this or you can use some paint pens. Um, this one is a fine tip. It's Posca. I got all these on Amazon as sets. Uh, we have Mosaic, uh, Flacy, and Ohuhu. So any of these brands will do. These are medium uh, tip brushes or markers. So you can see the size that they are. They're perfect for those fat areas. And then the um, Posca is a finer tip, okay, for the more fine lines. You have to shake them up. They all have a roller ball in them to shake up. And well, these do. I'm not sure these have a roller ball, but you need to shake them all up, which, whatever you're going to be using. And like I said, if you do not want to use a, a marker, you can use a um, black paint. Okay? So I'm going to start with the fine tip marker. And a piece of scrap paper here so I can make sure my uh, paint is flowing down on the tip of my brush okay 
and then we'll just begin outlining and filling them in. So this is where you'll want to look at your pattern and see all of the detail. And don't push super hard if you're using this Posca um, finer tip marker. Don't push really hard on the um, the marker itself because you're going to get splatter if it catches anywhere on the uh, project. You'll get splatter. So just look at the lines on the, the original piece to kind of figure out where you're going with all of your detail lines. So the whole project will be filled in with marker or black paint, whichever you choose to do. Okay, so there's the eyes, and then these are the nostrils, the mouth, a little bit of a gap in there, the lower lip, and that's a little bit thicker underneath it, for like a shadow. <coughs> And then we're going to go out and do all of the, um, the lines. This is her neck and the shadow underneath the neck right here. And then, or the chin, I guess. This is the neck line with the shadow. Okay, now all the rest of the lines are pretty easy. I am just going to um, outline them all. If they're thin, they'll stay thin. If they're not, then we can come back and fill in those areas. Right, keep the lines smooth. I made that one a little bit fatter, but it's going to be okay. Nobody's going to know if you made your line fatter but you. So, the eyes you want to keep pretty pretty precise, but um, some of these other ones, if they get a little bit wider, don't stress out about it because it'll it'll all come together when, when we get it painted. Those will all fade back into the background once we add color to it. So I'll do this side of the hair and go off camera and finish the other side, maybe. I don't know. I might stay on camera for the whole thing and then just speed it up. I haven't decided yet. But it really is just to follow the line. Draw from your shoulder, not from your wrist. Follow the line and move your whole shoulder as you do it. If you do it from the wrist, then you're, you know, going to end up twisting it and making 
weird lines. use this one a lot so it might be starting to run out of paint. This is not one that I can refill is the only thing. Moving my arm from the shoulder Fill in. Okay, we're going to do the other side. I don't want to lay my hand in that paint there, so I'm just going to start over here on this side, turn it upside down, and start on it. And this one comes up to that line. We'll bring all these lines up. To the very top there. Okay, now we're going to be doing a long one. And this one is pretty important that you get it pretty straight and not wobbly because it's right next to the face. It's fat up here and it goes back into the thin line and comes back out and gets wide at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to fill in up here with this marker but down at the bottom where it's a little fatter. I'm going to go with the wider tipped paint pen and you may not fill in every place um, and that's okay because <clears throat> we have to go back over this after we get done painting everything but it'll be much easier to do because you've already got your lines and everything there so you know exactly where you're going do this thicker paint pen down here and if you're using a brush you might want to go to a little bit wider one right there and then I'll go back to my uh, narrow one and be sure and look at your um, Your line drawing so you can tell where everything is going. Because there's a lot of lines going on here. Let's see where I'm at. This one's a little bit fatter up here at the top. And then we're going to draw.
draw these lines in down here. gets filled in. Okay, all the way across, all the way. A little bit cleaner lines here for me. Okay, we've got a great start to it. So I, I think I will go off camera and finish it out because it's basically just drawing the lines and filling it in. Following your pattern. So look and see which ones are dark and which ones aren't. If you mess up and put a dark where it shouldn't be, do not stress out about it because it's going to be fine in the end. So uh, I'll go finish getting these all drawn on here and we'll come back and start painting. Okay, I've got mine all drawn on here. This side is not quite dry yet, but I'm going to go over here to this side and m make sure when you do this that your paint is completely dry and erase any of my graphite lines that I did not draw over because they'll be in your project forever if you don't get them erased. but it's very important that you make sure that you are completely dry before you do this or you'll just smear your paint okay looking for any other pencil marks that I might have missed And mine's kind of patchy through here, but I'm not going to worry about it because we'll be coming back at the end and putting these back in. So, Okay, I'm going to brush off my eraser shavings in the trash can. And now we're going to get ready to do some painting. Make sure all of your eraser stuff is off. And your paint, your black paint is dry. Mine still feels a little bit tacky right there. We're going to work on the face first, though. Always brush your eraser savings away from where your paint will be so that you don't get it in your paint. Okay, so this is how she looks with the rough drawing in there. And the only thing you really needed to be precise about was the eyes, the facial facial features. Um, your hair, you can, you know, adjust it when we put the second layer of this on there. So I don't want you to feel like you um, have to be a certain way. Okay, let me grab my paintbrush. I'm looking for a certain one here. Oh, there it is. 
here. Okay. I am using a half inch flat faux squirrel. It is a dynasty brush. They're my favorite brushes to use. Okay, so for her face, let me get my paint out here. All right, for the face, I used burnt sienna. A little bit of naphthol red or naphthol red light, whichever you have, and some white. And we just want to make a really pretty flesh tone here. Oh goodness, can't get it wide open. need it for another project, another part here. I'm sure I'll need to add more white. So I'm going to take a little bit of the Burnt Sienna. Is that what I use? Burnt Sienna? Yep. Some white. A little tiny bit of red. More white. More Burnt Sienna. Just mix a color that is a flesh tone color that you like. More white in there. All right, now we're just going to brush in the whole face area. Don't worry about getting it on the black. We're going right over all this area right here. And don't forget her neck. I'm going to mix a little bit more. I'm going to try and mix enough to um, do the whole project that I obviously did not. Get some pink down. That's her neck down there. And I got this a little bit too pink. Get some more white and I'll just go over the whole thing again. Because I didn't get my paint mixed uh, the same color. So when you mix, mix enough to uh, cover whole face area. And you'll probably have to do two coats anyway. That's really, really pink now. You'll probably have to do two coats anyway because um, this is the only area where you want to cover a little bit more of the background. The rest of it you don't have to worry so much about. Oh, I smearing my black paint. Why is it doing that? be doing that. So let me remove. Here's how you fix your mistakes. Because we have the Mod Podge on here. Not really sure why that smeared that paint marker. It shouldn't have. Pat and remove. I want you to know how if you make a mistake, if you smear your paint like that, you've got to get the um, you got to get the paint off. Tap it. I don't know if that black paint will come off right there. That is very unusual. I've never had that happen before. a lot more because I know that's not a very big face area but I want to make sure sneak up on your red there and I've got plenty to cover all right here we go much better Okay, we'll let that dry. That'll probably do for our uh, face color. I don't think we'll need to go any darker than that. We can still 
Oh, I can still see a little bit of the background color. I don't know what you can see of the background pattern. So, and that's okay. Um, this is, uh, you know, a pop art kind of look, so we want to keep that going. Actually, I'm going to work on the lips real quick. Alright, I'm going to grab a four around this time. I'm going to take some of the naphthol red and a little bit of the burnt sienna and a little bit of white and make this kind of dirty pink color. You can make your lips any color that you want. Because I put so much water on there, my uh, paper started to raise, but when it dries it will be okay. So we'll just paint in the lips. Everything's going to be rough on the first coat, so it's okay. Okay, and the second coat, you may not even, you know, get it to match that same color. Now, your eye color is your choice. You can do blue eyes or green eyes. So if you're going to do green, grab some yellow, hands of yellow, and mix some. Do some blue, so we'll mix some ultramarine blue, or if you've got phthalo blue, that'd be fine. And make some blue eyes. And because I washed over it, I can't see my lines now. I might have to put my pattern lines back on here on the face. I'm going to go to add the, all the detail at the end. Okay, her eyes don't look shaped the same now. Kind of bugs me. because that should be dry. second quick layer on her eyes because this is going to dry very quickly if yours hasn't if yours isn't dry because I got a lot of water in her lips now so um, I'll wait to do anything else there but if yours isn't dry then um, don't put your second layer on yet because you'll just lift your paint dry brush a little bit on her cheeks so I'm gonna get a dry paper towel and take some of that color that we mixed for the lips and load it on our brush and then we're gonna come to a dry paper towel and offload it I'm using a dry kind of domed stippling brush this one is actually a low Cornell one I don't even know if they still sell it or not get a little bit more off and we're just going to stipple, very gently rub some of this color onto her cheeks. 
You won't see much of the color on this side. You don't have to do this because on my original one I don't think that I did. So it is really personal preference. I do want to see a little bit of that over here. A little bit of pinky stuff on our cheeks there. Okay, so let's get a detail liner. And for her eyes, we'll take just then a little bit of our um, ultramarine blue, which is what we're using here. I'll turn this upside down. I'll zoom in just a little bit here. And we're just going to draw some lines in the eyes coming in. Just like this. Follow the shape there. I'm going to grab a little bit of white and mix in with that blue that's on my brush. And put another little layer in here. This is a really light blue now because I mixed it with what paint was left in my brush. The white and the blue that was left in my brush. Okay. We will add a final little highlight on there at the end when we're done. So now I'm going to grab a smaller brush. it up with some water here. We're going to go straight ultramarine blue and just load a little bit of this on the edge of our brush. I should probably turn my ceiling fan off. It's really drying things out bad today. It's a very hot day here today. Okay, so I just want to float this color a little bit more the bottom of the eye. The shape's not the best, but when we outline it, it will be okay. And then I want to take my liner with just straight white and we'll create a little bit of a brighter highlight and let's just keep this kind of more in the center. There's the eyes. I know it looks weird because you can't see the black that I painted over right there, but it's there. So let's take some a little bit of our red. Teeny tiny little bit of black. And maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. Darken up that color that we base them with and I'm just side loading on half of my not even half a third of the brush has paint so when I paint you can see the only part of the brush the bristles has paint okay so I'm gonna float here try not to get out past your mouth bring it down into the a lip a little bit. Under the top. Okay, 
kind of lip to lip there because we're going to create the highlight on the top and the, the outer uh, edges of the lip. So we'll take our red and white and make a some moisture on my brush. Grab some more white, lighten that up just a little bit. Kind of a medium value pink color. Actually, I think I'll add a little bit of the burnt sienna in there. Kind of dirty that up so it's not quite so bright. Put this along the top edge of the lip and bottom of the lower lip. Let's do our shading again, which was the red and a little bit of black, Ooh, or a lot of black. Wipe your brush off, go grab some more red, grab a little bit of dark sienna, a water. to the hair a little bit, a little bit of a shadow there on the lip, and then along the top edge of the lip. And then back to our highlight, which was the white, and a little bit of red, and some burnt sienna, a little bit more white. And I'm going to go with a little bit more white this time. And out here on the bottom edge. And we have to outline that in black. I'm going to take a little bit of white and thin it down with some water. And we'll create some lines on the lip. Want to shape follow. So your lip curves down here and from the top it kind of curves in. Got it. And then let's take some raw sienna with a tiny bit of red in it. Maybe just a tiny bit of black. This was our shading color. And create some lines from up here. Might have to use a tiny bit more black in there. It just depends on how realistic you want the lips to be and uh, how much time you want to spend putting detail on there. So that's our lips until we get the outline on and then we may come back and do a little bit brighter of a highlight. And that's the eyes until we get all of the black detail lines back on there. So let's do the hair. And the hair I want to um, mix some blue. And let me just squirt some more out here because we're going to need a little bit more in this. Probably didn't need quite that much. 
I'll put some fresh black out. So we're going to create a wash of this color. Some blue with a tiny little bit of black. And a lot of water. We'll make this a dark blue color. Okay, touch my paper towel before I go to my project. And it's not uh, dark enough. Plus, it is too wet. So I'm going to touch my paper towel again. This brush that I'm using holds a little bit more water. So I can go a little bit farther on my projects. Load my brush, touch my paper towel. Now we're just going to do a wash on here. And then we'll come back and darken this because I don't want to get too dark too quick. Right over your black lines, right up to the edge of the canvas. Don't get it on the face. I kind of got some on the face there, but nothing I can do about it now. So I, if I remove it, I'll just remove the color that I put on the face. Just make sure you're aware of where your, your lines are to your neck and your face so that you don't go past them. Okay, so there's our first little layer on the hair. It's not nearly bright enough for me. Um, so I want it to be much bluer than that. So I'm going to make another not quite so sheer wash. A little bit of water this time, not as much. I'm going to completely get the moisture out of my brush this time. Okay, we want to make sure it's dry, because if it's not dry, we'll just lift any color that is wet. There we go, that's much better. Try to stay off the frame. You can make her hair a yellow color or a brown color, completely up to you. We just, I just didn't want the bright, bright blue on here. I wanted it toned down a little bit. I might have to go over this a third time. I'm not sure it's still dark as I want it to be. But it's getting there. just want it to be a little bit of a dirty, whew, a lot of a dirty blue. Now if you're doing a smaller piece than I'm doing, your paint will go a lot farther. Okay, we are definitely getting there. So I'm going to do one more coat on this side. Try to have a lot more pigment in there this time. Don't go over your black lines.
we're using a color that's a little bit more sheer down here in the hair. We want to see all that black stuff you put in there. That wasn't quite dry there, so I started lifting the paint. I'm actually trying not to get on my black paint back up there on the frame. So if you can stay off of your frame, that is a good thing. If you're doing a frame, you don't have to do a frame. do good. I like the variation of color going through her hair. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. And then we're going to add back in all of our black lines. Now, if you don't want to do it on the hair out here, you don't have to, but it's going to make it pop more if you do. It just depends on if you want to or not. I'm not going to say you have to do it, but uh, I guarantee it will look much better if you do do it. So I'm going to get my markers ready. And as soon as the face is probably dry enough, I can go ahead and do the face. But pretty dry there. I just have to make sure it's dry where it goes, where the eyelashes go out into the project. So I'm going to grab my markers and my line drawing since I covered up so much of the black in my eyes. I'm getting really low on paint on this thin one. I'm drawing this in exactly right, but I'm looking at my line drawing and going from there on the lines that I can no longer see. I'll come back and put a bright highlight in her eye in just a minute. I feel like she should have a lot more eyelashes on here, but that's the way the line drawing was. 
eyelashes, so if you want more eyelashes, go right ahead and add some. I personally feel like she needs to have more. Of course, some of these won't show up because they'll be covered up. Personal preference, right there. Okay, so her face is looking a lot better since we added the lines in. I want to work on some highlights on her face before I move on. So again with my liner brush, I'm going to go into some white paint, thin it down. Now when you're thinning down your light colors like this, you want to use clean water. So use the clean water in your basin, not the dirty water. bit more of a highlight and then I'm just going to take the back end of the paintbrush and grab a dot of white and I'll put a dot there and a dot there. I want it to be about the same size and we'll put some thin lines on the lip some brighter highlights. little bit out here on the edge. Oh, that's a big, big old blob there. I'm sure I had water roll down my brush. there. This is going to get the brightest highlight on her lip. If 
you want her lips to be more red, you can go in and glaze over her lips. have to redraw in all your other lines. And like I said, you can do as much detail or as little detail as you want to her face. I don't want you to feel like you have to, you know, you put makeup on her. You can make the nose shape. Um, this was just a simple little face line drawing that I thought would be easy for everyone to do. And uh, I really liked how it looked. So uh, I'm going to go in and redo all of my lines. And that one actually didn't go all the way to meet that one, but it does now. And I've got a little bit on that edge, so I'm just going to widen this just a little bit. Okay, let's do all the others. from the shoulder. This is a pretty easy project to do. Not a ton of painting on it. dry with this marker. Definitely gonna have to order some more. Okay, so you can see this side compared to this side. So there may just be a few places on your hair that you need to um, redarken and maybe not all of them. That is totally up to you. So I'm gonna go and get the rest of these uh, redrawn in, get them dark again, and we'll come back and look at the finished project. Okay, I think my pen is all dry here, so I want to refloat some of my black that we did around the, the border. A lot of paint there. So I want to do it along the bottom here. And along the top. Mostly on the blue to bring the blue into the rest of it. really feel like this edge could use just a tiny bit darkening of its shading. Go down this edge to bring this, to push this part back behind.
and that should push her all behind the painting. Now I'm not, this is staying a basic little um, acrylic painting where you don't have to do a whole lot of shading and highlighting and things like that. The most we did was on the mouth and the eyes. But if you are a little bit more advanced and you want to go into a little bit more detail, you can certainly shade around the hair and a little bit on the neck to kind of push the face behind the hair a little bit more. But we're just going to keep it right here at this, a fun little quick design. And um, I had a good time with this one. Um, I hope that you did too, and I hope that you will paint with me again. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. Give me a thumbs up, like, share, comment. I love comments, and I love responding to you, and I try not to ever miss a single comment on any of my videos. I try to keep those up um, because I appreciate every single person that watches my videos, and I want them to know that what they ask or what they say is important to me. So what you ask and what you say is very important to me. So um, please like and share my videos, and I will see you guys on the next one. So long, everybody. Bye-bye.